And good morning, 70s time is 650. David White is here from New York Sea Grant along with Chuck O'Neill, invasive species specialist. Good morning to you both. Good morning, Jeff. How are you, for you today? coming in. Very good. good. Uh, boy, this is a, uh, a, a subject that people really want to pay attention about, uh, too, because this invasive species that we're talking about, if you get it on your skin, you, you're in trouble, aren't you? you? You really are, and this is a, a new one to the area. It's uh, be, become important to the folks up here in Jefferson, St. Lawrence County. Um, there's a population of it, and I've invited Chuck O'Neill to join us today, who's our invasive species expert, to talk about giant hogweed and some of the other exotics that are really beginning to impact people in a lot of different ways. Yeah, we did a story not too long ago with uh, Chris Honorado, a reporter here at the station, on this uh, specific uh, problem. What happens, what, where is it located, first off, and what happens if you get this hogweed onto your skin? What happens if Okay, it's, it's in 25 counties in the state. Uh, up here, the only place we've seen it so far is near Westcott Beach. Mm -hmm. uh, but it has a sap that will hypersensitize your skin to sunlight. It's called phytophotodermatitis, uh, plant photo and dermatitis. If you get it on your skin with sweat or any other kind of moisture, it sensitizes you. And then if you get in the sunlight, it can cause second degree burns full skin thickness. And you just can't wash this off, right? Uh, if you get it on you, if you can immediately wash it off uh -huh. with a strong soap, you can prevent the worst of it. That's what it looks like right there? That's what it looks like. Its leaves can be up to five foot in diameter. Its stalks can be up as much as 18 feet tall, two inch in diameter. Uh, that's a good stand of it. The seed uh, heads are about two foot across. That stand is about 16 foot tall. If, if, you, if you're walking through the woods here, Chuck, and, uh, and, or you go by this in a field and you just brush up against it, is that enough to cause concern? Probably not. Uh, with this one, it's not like poison ivy. In this one, you've got to actually break off a stem and get the sap on your skin. Okay. Uh, but then once you get in the sun, you start getting the burns, and they can recur Ugh. the next year and the next year. That can happen five years in and a row from getting the That's the, the burn sap. right there on TV right. there. That's uh, the picture that we're looking at. Um, you know, it's scary to think that there's something like this out there, and it's just, I'm guessing it's easy to spread too, right? Because of the seeds that are on top of this right. plant? It spreads by seeds, and it spreads by underground tuberous-like uh, roots, so it's very hard to kill. Uh, you basically have to spray it with a good, strong pesticide, something like Roundup, mm -hmm. let it die back, cut it down, bag it, and put it in a secure landfill. Should you do that with, like, gloves or something on it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, gloves, moon suits. Uh -huh. uh, do <laughs> not cut it down. Yeah. 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 Don't use weed whackers. Uh -huh. Don't burn it because if you get the soot on your skin, it You're can drunk. still give you the, the reaction. So if somebody sitting at home may think that they have this plant uh, in their field or on their property, what should they be doing, David? Well, the, uh, the nice thing is Chuck has put together a new fact sheet for us on giant hogweed, so they can go to our website. It's going to be a PDF file up on our website mm -hmm. at uh, nysgextension.org, um, so they can take advantage of it there. And it's another one of the examples of an exotic species and an invasive species that's coming in that people really need to be aware of, mm -hmm. um, you know, along with purple loosestrife, zebra mussel, gypsy mussel, other things yeah. that we've got. It's just another one that's come in, and each one of them brings a, a nuance to it that we've got to, as a citizenry and as a community, be concerned about, be watching for and then be thinking about how do we keep it in control and how do we eradicate it. And, and Chuck put some information together on it and the other exotics that people can be looking at to try to control it on their property. The information's at the bottom of your screen. i got 10 seconds. Where did it come from? Uh, Europe, mainly. It was brought in the late 1800s. It was uh, put into Victorian gardens because it looked like Queen Anne's lace on steroids, and it quickly escaped from there. Hmm. Interesting stuff, and you have to be aware of it. So, gentlemen, thank you for coming in. Good to you. Thank it. you. We are back here in a couple of moments.